Good afternoon everyone, Country Flyboy here, and today I'm going to give you a slightly different tutorial than what I normally give you. First of all, don't diss my desktop background. And the tutorial is going to be Airport Design Editor. I'm going to be going over how to make basic scenery changes to airports in Flight Sim X. Now I'm going to be going over the stuff you need to know basically. Um, we'll remodel an airport, um, and I'll show you a few tricks and whatnot, but you're not going to be making payware scenery with this. It's not going to be, like, it's not going to be FS Dream Team quality stuff, but it is easy enough that pretty much anyone can do it. The first thing I need you to do is download Airport Design Editor. I'm using the latest version. Uh, it's a very useful tool. It's completely free. There is a paid version. Uh, but the paid version is mostly just if you want to make payware sceneries with it, you need to get the paid version. But if you're just going to be doing freeware sceneries, don't worry about the paid version. Just get the free version. That's what I'm using. I'm not doing payware sceneries, so free version is fine. Now, I have a metric ton of library objects that I have downloaded over the years. All right here. That I keep the downloads for any library objects that I use in my sceneries um, because I, I like to include them with the scenery so you don't have to go and download a, a metric ton worth of stuff. Most people who develop these libraries have no problem with you doing that. A few of them do. They want, for, for whatever reason, they want people to have to go and download things individually, but I just don't include those particular libraries. Or if I do use them, I mention them and mention what the name of the library is so that they know to go find them. So um, the first step is to actually visit the airport in Flight Simulator. Now, I want to stress I am on my editing computer, not my main computer. Um, my main computer where I record gamings, Gaming, flight sim, and all that is on one computer that's a bit beefier than this one. This is a weaker computer that I use for editing videos and scenery and whatnot. So this is not my main computer, so forgive everything looking shittier. Now, the airport we have decided to model today is going to be Vidalia Regional in Vidalia, Georgia. This airport right here. Kilo Victor. Delta India is the airport we're going to be remodeling. Feel free to remodel this airport yourself in your own um, scenery following along with me or do any other airport. So the very first step is to visit the airport and flight sim. Make a note of how things look. So um, we see we got your standard low detailed flight simulator airport here. Concrete ramp, one, two, three, four five six seven so six parking spots are visible one of them is a fuel slot we got a closed runway we want to note the position of the airport so I'm gonna to go to map real quick and we're gonna bring up the information for the airport In particular we want to note its longitude and latitude it's at north 32 11.58 and West 82, 22.33. North 32, 11.56, 82.2227. That's pretty freaking close. It's only off by a few minutes, basically, or a few seconds. So, um, so we determine the airport's in the right spot about, it's only off by a few seconds, which basically means everything's going to be shifted a little, about a few feet over, but that's not really a big deal. So, you just want to look over, make any notes that you think you're going to need. Now, I'm going to tell you my particular way I like doing sceneries is deleting absolutely everything and starting from the ground up. So, I'm going to close Flight Simulator real quick because we don't need it running right now. Let me wait for the uh, thing to... There we go. We're going to bring up the airport and airport design editor real quick. We're going to, oops, nope, not that. We want to open stock airport and simply type in its identifier. You can also sort the list over here if you want. That is doable, but I prefer the identifier. Just type that in since you most likely have figured that out by now. Now while it loads, I want you to go onto your favorite web browser. I'm using Internet Explorer right now just because it's easier to work with when recording. 
But uh, plus, I got some bookmarks saved on here that I used that I did not import over to Chrome. But we need to look up some information about this airport. Now, if you're in the U.S., the best way to do it is to just go to the Digital AFD. You Google search Digital AFD, follow the first link you get. It'll be pretty obvious how to find the airports from there. Um, and I've pulled up the AFD entry on this airport. Now, reading AFD entries is a bit beyond the scope of this tutorial, but they're pretty obvious how they are. Um, they've got the airport name, airports ITEA and ICAO identifier, location relative to the city, the UTC time offset, the coordinates, the elevation, the B indicates there's a beacon at this airport, so where's the star? Right there. Right there at the ramp, there is a rotating green and white beacon for a lit land airport. Fuel has 100 low lead and Jet A1 Plus available. Traffic pattern altitude, see remarks. Notum file is Vidalia. Runway information right here. Uh, this bit right here, you don't have to worry about. That is the what load bearing info for the runway. Single 30,000 pounds, dual 48,000 pounds, and two dual 85,000 pounds. You don't have to worry about that in Flight Simulator, so... This, way. this mark here is the high intensity runway lights. That's the edge lights on the runway. Runway 6 has a Raleigh and a Pappy. There's the Pappy information. Also has an obstacle. Uh, let's see. Thresh th threshold crossing heights 41 feet. Um, 2 4 has a Mauser and a Pappy. Uh, the other runway is 5,000 by 150. Concrete. They're both concrete. Remarks. Interesting things to know about the airport here. Airport manager and AWOS frequencies, as well as comm frequencies and nearby radio navigation aids, as well as, um, oh, it's got an ILS approach too. How nice. One of the, so we've looked up information on the airport. You might want to look at charts to see if there's anything nearby that might be fun to know about. The other thing I want to bring up is I'll link to this website in the description. This is a website that has thumbnails of all the default flight simulator library objects. So, there's not thumbnails, there's not very many of them thumbnailed in ADE, but this website has thumbnails for you. So, we'll use this to make our references. Alright, so the airport has been brought up in Airport Design Editor. Now, how do you, you can click and, oops, click and drag boxes. You don't really see the box get generated, but it does, as you can see, select everything inside that box. Well, it did. It used to. Older version did that. I guess that's not done anymore. But what I like to do is I just like to delete everything and start from the ground up. So I like to go to list mode, and you can change what's listed over here. First, we want to list aprons. Uh, we'll select all and delete them. Skip down to jetways. There are none at this airport, but you'd want to delete them as well. Uh, models, nav aids. You should skip all that and go right down to parking. Select all, delete. Runways, skip. We want the runways to stay. As for scenery objects, select all, but then I go through the scenery objects to see which ones I need to keep. So I want to keep, I'll hold down control while I do this. I want to keep the ILS transmitter, the localizer antenna. Uh, we'll, we'll delete the wind tee. But we want to keep this one here, Beacon Tower 01. That controls where the um, the Beacon Tower, the green and white rotating Beacon Tower is. We'll look through all the other ones. Radio. Okay, there is a radio tower on the field. We're going to keep that. There's two objects associated with the radio tower. Tech Shack 01 and Radio 01. Keep both of those. Everything else we can delete. I'll keep the windsock, though. We'll just delete all them. So real quick, I want you to note, this is the beacon tower here. If you delete this object, you have to, you go through a little bit more trouble to get it back. Because moving, simply keeping the object from the default airport and just moving it around will also move the beacon. But if you delete this object, you have to place this object again. But you have to place the beacon separately. See, when you import it from default, this object is still there. It, it, it ADE keeps both the beacon and the beacon tower in the same place. But if you delete it and place your own, you have to place the tower and the beacon light separately. They're two separate things. Okay, starts. Select all and delete them. Not required, but you don't have to. There's no taxi designators here. Taxi links. 
You can either select all and delete the taxi links, or an easier way is to go to taxi points, select all, and delete them there. That's the easier method. Taxi signs, select all, delete. Uh, terrain polygons, there shouldn't be any. Now you noticed there's absolutely nothing left on this airfield. Nothing but the runways and a select few scenery objects. The boundary fence is still there, and these blue lines are apron lights. We're going to delete them. I'm going to delete the boundary fence. I'll place my own later. Delete all the edge lighting for the aprons. And now the airport is prepped and ready. One last thing we want to do. We want to make a folder for this um, scenery. I have a particular projects folder on my desktop that I do all my scenery projects go in. And I've made a folder for this one, simply named it the IKO. Inside it, I got three folders, three subfolders, one for scenery, one for texture, and one for lights. Um, lights, I'm not going to get into. Uh, I'm going to put them there because that's how I normally do it. But we're actually going to be making use of default lighting for this tutorial. When I, what That lights folder is there for custom lighting that I do on some of my airports that involve it's a much more involved process of making the library objects with air airfield lighting toolbox which is another program that I don't want to get into because it's a bit more complicated uh, and you gotta know what you're doing to really mess with it but uh, yeah and those require me placing lights individually we're not gonna get into that we're just gonna make use of the default lighting now inside this folder I got my two main subfolders scenery and texture I also have a satellite image that I got from Google Earth Plus, high quality satellite image, that we are going to place on, on ADE as a background. Now, real quick, we're going to look over this airport, and we can see that the uh, runways is concrete. They, they are in the crappiest condition possible. Con the taxiways are concrete. This taxiway here is most likely closed. There's really not a reason for it to be open because you're not going to be taxiing around over there. And this goes around trees and whatnot. And this is a closed runway anyway. We know it's a closed runway because it's got X's on it. Now, the apron seems to be asphalt. This looks like asphalt. That actually doesn't look that old. That looks like asphalt that's been poured recently. So, yeah, we got our work cut out for us with this one because um, default was all concrete. And you can see this is actually, looks like either asphalt or tarmac. Most likely it's asphalt. The main taxiways are still concrete, though. Okay, so as for prep work, we've got our folder ready. We've got our airport ready. Real quick, before I close out the video, uh, we're going to do one last thing on prep work, and that is we are going to add that background image. Let's see here. We're going to go to Projects, Vidalia. It's going to give me a warning that the, the file size is too big. It's okay. It can actually um, it can put it in there. Now we got a humongous background image to work with. We need to position this image um, so that we can make use of it. Now, there are ways to do this. I'm going to show you the way I like to do it. It's not the most accurate way, but it gets everything done. Believe it or not, Flight Sim X, as far as U.S. airports is concerned, is pretty accurate when it comes to the placement of the runways. Everything else is a little bit off, but 9 times out of 10, it has the runways in the exact right spot that they need to be in. So real quick, we're just going to look over the runways. 6 and 2, 4 is 6,002 by 100. So let's find 6 and 2, 4. It's this one. 6,000. 150. I'm going to change that. Well, actually, no. We're going to keep it 150 for now. Actually, you know what? No. We need to change that to 100 now that I think about it. Length is 6,000. That's only two feet off. That's close enough to work with. The other runway, 1331, is 5,002 by 150. So here's 1331. It is 5,004 by 150. So that's the right dimensions. This one is the closed one. We don't need to worry about that. So we need to place this image and orient it in a way that it lines up. The best way to do that is to select it so that the X appears. Position image is what you want to click, and we're going to change the heading. I'm going to use the mouse wheel. 
Uh, it's actually going to be about a 300 heading, most likely. Nope. 350. Let's try that. 350. There we go. Then I can use the mouse wheel to make fine adjustments. Now I'm going to simply scale it down. And what I want to do is I want to get the relative length of the runway right. As you can see, we pretty much have that. The runway is relatively the same length on the image as it is in the, uh, the, the, the ADE. Let me place it there, and we'll see. Okay, we're about 200 feet off. So what we're going to do now is we're going to select Width, and we're going to scroll up on the scroll wheel and just make this a little bigger. We can actually speed this up if we uh, just type in 3,200. position image. We'll just scroll it up so that the, the length of the runway as it appears is about the same. Let me turn off the nav aid view so that gets out of the way. Alright, you are positioned relatively correctly and you are positioned relatively correctly as far as length of the runway is concerned. Now for the other one, height is what we're going to be adjusting. So you need to be a bit longer. So we're going to go to position image again. We're going to select height this time and we're going to be scrolling up on it until it gets about the same length. Let me see here. I'm going to scroll them up a little bit more. This is not the most accurate way of placing the background image. It's just the method I like because it's easier. Believe it or not, this is the easier method. <laughs> For me, anyway. Okay, so we've got that runway is the same relative length. That runway is the same relative length. And if we put one over the other, they're about the same relative width, too. So I'm going to position this so that a little bit of the runway is showing on top of that. Now we want to position the heading. And the way I do that is I just... I put it so a little bit of the runway is exposed there, and then I play with the heading by rotating it until I get the same amount of runway exposed on both sides. Don't feel 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 free to actually zoom in and see what they look like. We are actually pretty close to right here. So I position the image now so that it is relatively accurate to the default runways. Yep, everything looks good. Now remember what I said. The default runways, 9 times out of 10, they're in the right spot. You can see the closed runway is off. That is perfectly fine. Um, closed runways, they don't have... See, Microsoft, when they built the airports, they most likely pulled data from things like the airport facility directory and whatnot. And you can see in the AFD, there's no info on the closed runway. Why would there be? So it's not uncommon to have closed runways be off a bit. That is totally, totally fine. We can reposition that runway as needed. Now, you need to click on the airport so the X appears. Right-click it, and I want you to lock that. What that does is now I can no longer move or edit that background image. It's locked down. If I want to unlock it, you just simply have to click lock again and it unlocks it. But I want that lock because if I mi if at any point in this I misclick, I could accidentally move that image and I have to go back and realign it. And there's no guarantee I had it realigned the same way. So if you lock it now, you will never move it and it it's there. So the prep work on our airport is now done. We are ready to start making modifications in it, and we will be getting into that in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed the, the prep work video for making your own scenery edits in Flight Sim X. Hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you next time.